The Climate Engine Research app is a great way to get started using spatial data to monitor natural resources and is already trusted by the Bureau of Land Management, the U.S. Forest Service, and NOAA, among others. The research app unlocks the power of cloud computing to analyze decades of climate and vegetation data all from your web browser. Before you get started though, it's helpful to know where everything's located. So in this video, I'm gonna give you a quick demonstration of how to create maps using Climate Engine. I like to say that there are three key features available in Climate Engine. The first is the ability to create all different types of maps that we'll be focusing on today. You can also create graphs, and these can be really powerful as well, and is the subject of a similar video just like this. The last option is to share and export your data, which we'll cover as well in this video. When you get to the research app, you're going to see an interface that looks like this. It's centered on a big interactive map powered by Google Maps, and then has a number of different panels that you can use to explore the data. What we're gonna do in this video is unpack how to use each of those panels. The first thing you're gonna to have to do to get started is to select either making a map or a graph. For this video, we're gonna make a map. When you select that option, you're gonna get this map options menu on the left-hand side, which is really your control pad for every aspect of the type of map that you're going to create. Let's break this down a little bit further. The first thing you'll have to do is select the specific data product that you want to analyze. To do that, you can use this type dropdown first to select the theme of the data, climate or remote sensing or hazards. There are different options there. The next option is to select the specific data set that you want to analyze. So if you're looking at climate, you might be looking at GridMet or PRISM. If you're interested in satellite remote sensing, you might look at Landsat or MODIS. And then finally, you'll have to choose which variable you want to analyze. And so let's say you selected PRISM for doing climate analysis. You might be interested in different uh, precipitation variables or temperature variables. There are a variety of different variables that you can select. The next choices that you'll have to make are the processing choices. So here, this is determining what type of map you wanna make. Do you wanna create a map for a certain point in time? Do you wanna produce a trend map, looking at how a certain variable has trended over 30 years perhaps, or an anomaly, comparing uh, how this current year or a different year compares to a long-term average? You have a lot of different control here. And then the last option is to select the specific time period that you wanna analyze. By default, this is gonna be the last 60 days, but you can do it over the last 60 days, over the last 14 days, over last summer, over the entire period of record, which might be as many as 70 years. For our map here, we're going to just select a precipitation map over the last 60 days. And once we've made all of our selections, we click Get Map Layer, and we're gonna get a nice big interactive map here that we can zoom in on, extract values from, and start to interact with. We have a number of different mapping controls available. We can change the color ramp or the limits on the color ramp. We can change the base map if we wanna have a hillshade map or a road map, or to remove the labels from the satellite map. We can add different layers, so we can add the states, the counties, we can add BLM allotments as well. And then we can apply different masks to reduce the amount of data that's displayed in the map as well. If you wanna save your data for later, we do provide the option to uh, export the data as a raster that'll export it as a TIFF image that you can use later and, and save to bring into your GIS or whatever kind of software you'd like to use it in. In a lot of cases, you might not want to export your data out of Climate Engine, if it's a quite a large data set, for example. And for that, we provide the ability to produce a link. This creates a short link that will forever be tied to the map that you created, that you can save for later to put in a presentation, or you can share with your colleagues or family members or friends. It will forever be tied to that map. 
And so there's a ton that we can do in the Climate Engine Research app to create maps. This is just scratching the surface. And so I encourage you to spend some time exploring this app more, playing around with some of the capabilities, and to stay tuned for future videos as we start to create some tutorials about how to create specific maps for specific use cases. Thanks for your time and hope to catch you next time.